and welcome to The Chair. My name is Amy Bauman. I'm with For His Glory Ministry, and this is our weekly teaching. We come together each week, figure out what chair we're sitting in, look at God's Word, apply it to our lives, hopefully become more encouraged and more like Jesus. But today is December 20, five days until Christmas. So I just want to encourage you to put down that wrapping paper, step away from the cookies, maybe unplug the tree and just spend a few minutes with me, uh, just realigning our hearts and remembering why he came. So lots to share with you today, but before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that this season is a reminder of Emmanuel, God with us. And Lord, we need you today. There are so many people struggling, so many people hurting. In spite of this Christmas season with all the festivities and all the ribbons and all the bows and all the presents and the trees and and all of the festivities, Lord, we need your peace. And so Holy Spirit, we invite you into this time We ask that you open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have for us today and that you realign our hearts with your word. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you are going to do. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I still have some Christmas shopping to do for my husband. Don't tell him, please. He's really hard to shop for. Uh, We have kids coming over um, on Christmas Day, grandbabies, really excited about that. My husband and I are going to have a little bit of time together Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. But I'm sure, just like you, right, you're planning all of the, the last minute things, five days until Christmas, and you are checking things off your list, you're making sure that you've got everything done, that you've got all the the food prepared, the presents wrapped and under the tree your Christmas cards out, all of those things. But the Lord reminded me that with five days to go, that we need to take a few minutes and remember why he came. And so I want to look at that today. I want to look at some reasons why Christ came so that we can be mindful of that, so we can be remembering the true meaning of Christmas and what that looks like. Number one, to do the will of the Father. John 6, 38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. To save sinners. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. 1 Timothy 1, 15. I am so grateful for that that he died on the cross while we were yet sinners. Uh, He changed my life. And I know uh, that he has changed yours and he can change yours. To bring light to a dark world. I don't know about you, but you can see the darkness. There are times where it is physically tangible, the darkness that's in this world. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness, John twelve forty six. He came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who was of the truth listens to my voice. John 18, 37. In this world today, there are lots of truths out there. You can grab onto one depending on the day of the week, depending on the kind of mood you're in, depending on what you want to have as your truth that day. But my friends, I want to remind you that there is only one truth, and that is God's word. And he wrote it to us in a love letter that we get to read anytime we want to, right, that helps us navigate this broken world and it helps us navigate in troubled times, in hard circumstances, in moments of stress and anxiety, 
It helps us to realign our hearts to what is true and how we are to live. And we can read the Bible and see how when Jesus came into the world as a baby and lived as a man on this world, how he healed and how he served and how he taught and how he focused everyone's attention to his Father, Father God. And we can ourselves focus our attention on Jesus and how to live in this world day by day. He came to give eternal life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John 6, 51. Jesus died on the cross. He sacrificed his body, his blood. It was shed for you and for me. And we can celebrate that by uh, taking the bread and the cup in remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross so that we can remember that we have eternal life. Another reason why Jesus came. He came to bring great joy. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Luke 2.10 I know for myself in my own life, despite my circumstances, I can have joy. I can live on top of my circumstances. I can focus my eyes on Jesus and have the, the true joy that I can have by remaining in him, remaining in his love. That's one of the struggles that we have today is that we're constantly being pulled and distracted and detoured away from God. But we, when we remain in that love, in his love, we can have joy. He came to reveal God's love for sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 He came to die. He came to die on the cross to forgive us of our sins. He came to seek and save the lost. He came to serve. He came to bring peace. He came to bind up broken hearts. He came, to get, he came to give us the spirit of adoption, to make us partakers of the divine nature. And he came to restore human nature to holiness. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy the Son of God. When I think about our human nature, and I, and I believe this is where I want to camp today, where the Lord is asking me to camp and uh, to finish out um, today's message, is when I think about human nature and how He's came to restore us, right? I think about relationship. And, and God the Father has been restoring us back to Himself since the garden when he put that whole plan into motion, when Eve took the bite of the apple and her and Adam partake of that, of that apple and their eyes were opened and sin entered the world. And from that point, God started orchestrating this plan to restore us back to himself. Restore. And when I think about restore, when I think about those words that we just Read to restore human nature to holiness, I have to ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself today about that word restore. And are you operating that way in your own life? This month, December 9, my stepmother passed away. She married my dad when I was 11. Uh, after my parents' divorce, and I had just this ultimate blessing to be a part of her life for the past 40 plus years. And when I think about restore and what Jesus is able to do in relationships, it makes me think about this relationship with her. I got the call on Friday 
that they were taking her by ambulance to the hospital, that they weren't sure what was wrong. She was having complications from influenza. There was something going on with her heart. And so we were called um, in the morning. Uh, it was like around 10 and asked to pray. My dad was going to follow in the ambulance. And so over the course of the day, um, as we were waiting to hear what was going on, we were praying. I had asked um, other friends, reached out to other friends to pray, other family members to pray. And we were warring for her life, um, unsure of everything that was happening, praying for her healing, um, just praying for restoration. And in the evening around six o'clock, I got the call. There was confusion over the course of the day. My dad was there. Um, he was listening to the doctors. He was trying to take in everything that they were telling him. And so my aunt called and she said, I think you need to go to the hospital. They don't think she's going to make it through the night. And so by the time we got to the hospital and she was hooked up to all of these machines and a ventilator and life support, they told us that because of the complications of the influenza and the recent found cancer that they had found uh, when they were doing some imaging, that she wasn't going to make it. That everything was shutting down. And from the time that they started disconnecting her, from the time that I got the call that morning, it was less than eight hours. In eight hours, our entire lives changed. What I'm reminded about when I think about her is how grateful I am of the relationship that we had. And just last month, her and my dad and my grandma and our family were at the Thanksgiving table and had the most beautiful day celebrating being thankful for family. And I got to love on her and kiss her and hug her and tell her how much I loved her. And that was the last time I saw her. And even though we have talked and texted since then, that was my last interaction with her. And then she was gone. So when I think about restoration and Jesus coming into the world and all the reasons why he came, I'm asking you today, are you receiving all of those reasons? Are you living that out in your life? Are you offering up to others that same restoration, that same love, that same forgiveness, that same service that Jesus did for all of us. I know so many times in these human bodies, right? We get caught up in the flesh. We get caught up in being wounded, in being hurt, in being stubborn, in being not offering up forgiveness to other people. And our relationships suffer. Our relationships with other people suffer. And I think sometimes we think, well, I'll call her tomorrow. Well, I'll email him tomorrow. Well, I'll check in with them next week when my temper is quieted and maybe I will choose my words. When we think about why Jesus came and all of the reasons, I share with you my tragic story this month. Because we never know how long we have. We never know when that person that we're having that relationship issue with will leave, will be taken from us, will pass away. Or maybe there's never another opportunity to say you're sorry, or I love you, or hey, thank you for being in my life. What I I'm so grateful for to God is our relationship. 
for the opportunity that I had on Thanksgiving to love on her and that our relationship was in good standing, right? Because of what we were both utilizing in our life, which was Jesus, right? Jesus loving on us, forgiving us, restoring us. So therefore we offer that up to other people. Can I say that about every relationship in my life? I want to. And it makes me question, it makes me check myself to make sure that if there is anyone, anyone that is in my life to make sure that I have a restored relationship with them, that I have told them how much they mean to me, how much I love them, how much I care about them, and to make sure that I'm offering them the same gifts and why Jesus came. I'm the same gifts that he's giving me, I'm giving to them. And so as we are five days in the countdown of Christmas and remembering why Jesus came, I encourage you today to take a moment. And if there is any relationship in your life today that is not operating in the full gifts of what, why Jesus came, that restoration, that forgiveness, that love, that humility, that it's not too late to make a call. It's not too late to send a text. It's not too late to invite that person over for coffee and say, you know what? I'm so grateful for you. I'm so thankful for you. And you know what? I know we've had some problems in the past. And so I'm sorry. I want to do better. I want Jesus to be in the center of our relationship. And I, and I want it to thrive. We have to ask ourselves, what's more important, the person or the problem? And my friends, the person every single time. I know this is maybe some heavy stuff. But it's important to make sure that we are focused on the true gifts of Christmas and why Jesus came and that he offers all of us love, salvation, forgiveness, freedom in him, and that we need to offer that to other people. I am so grateful for the 41 years of relationship that I had with my stepmom. She was always um, supporting me, loving me, being my friend, and I'm going to miss her deeply. And I know that my family will miss her also. And I'm grateful that my very last words were her to her were I love you and happy Thanksgiving. And I'm so happy that you're in my life. Don't miss out on that opportunity. Don't miss out on the opportunity to say that to someone else. Life is short. It is a gift. And let us remember that this Christmas season. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. And I I thank you for each person watching today, each person listening. And I pray, Lord, that you will break in to their situations, their circumstances, their relationships, and that they will remember that they are a gift, that they remember why you came, Jesus, to give us love and peace and joy and forgiveness and to restore us back to yourself. And may we offer up those same gifts to those in our lives. We love you and praise you and thank you. And ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today and for joining us. Have a Merry Christmas. And I just wish you many blessings throughout this week and on Christmas Day with your family and friends. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.